हेलो एवरीवन सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू द चैप्टर टू इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑलरेडी आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट रेट ऑफ फ्लो और डिस्चार्ज कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशन बर्नलिस इक्वेशन देन डिफरेंट लिमिटेशन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ बर्नलिस इक्वेशन ऑल्सो प्रैक्टिकल एप्लीकेशन सो एमंग द प्रैक्टिकल एप्लीकेशन I think Peter tube and venturi meter are already completed in previous lecture so today I am going to discuss the another application of Bernoulli's equation this is orifice meter so it is a device used for measuring the rate of flow of a fluid flow through the pipe rate of flow or discharge Uh, it is a cheaper device as compared to venturi meter and this also work on the same principle as that of venturi meter and it consists of a flat circular plate which has a circular hole in concentric with the pipe this is called orifice this is the orifice this figure shows and uh, the discharge whatever we calculate uh, the formula for calculation is q equal to cd into a not a1 into square root of 2g is divided by square root of a1 square minus a0 square this is the formula for the calculation of discharge through the orifice meter so let's solve a problem an orifice meter with orifice diameter 10 cm is inserted in a pipe of 20 cm diameter the pressure gauges fitted upstream and downstream of the orifice meter gives readings of 19.62 newton per centimeter square and 9.81 newton per centimeter square respectively coefficient of discharge for the orifice meter is given as 0.6 find the discharge of water through the pipe so here we have to find out the discharge so let's see what are given Uh, d not diameter of orifice d not equal to 10 cm so from that we calculate a not equal to pi by 4 into d not square this is 78.54 cm square similarly diameter of pipe this is d1 equal to 20 cm a1 equal to pi by 4 d1 square so our answer is 314.16 cm square p1 is given pressure this is 19.62 newton per cm square we convert it into meter so that 19.62 into 10 to the power 4 newton per meter square and if we calculate it or the energy pressure energy this is p1 by rho g so this much 1000 rho into g so we multiply 1000 to 9.81 this is 20 meter of water similarly uh, p2 by rho g this much 10 meter of water so we know h equal to formula p1 by rho g minus p2 by rho g so this is 10 meter of water or 1000 cm of water again cd is given this is 0.6 so we know the formula for discharge q equal to cd a not a1 by square root of a1 square minus a not square into square root of 2g h so here we put all the values after calculation we found the value is 68213.28 cm cube per second or after calcul uh, conversion to the liter the answer will be 68.21 liter per second next is or next article if we say 2.2 this is flow over notches and wires let's see first what is notch a notch may be defined as an obstruction over which the flow of liquid occurs as the depth of flow above the base of the notch is related to the discharge the notch forms a useful measuring device and in case of measuring tank or reservoir the opening is provided at the side of the tank such that the liquid surface in the tank is below the top edge of the openings in fact in case of notch this is a large opening which has no upper edge so that it has a variable area depending upon the level of the free surface this is known as notch next is wear so a wear is a notch on a large scale used for measuring the flow of a river or canal etc and it is a concrete or masonry structure of substantial breadth built across the river in the direction of flow 
and this allows the excess water to flow over its entire length to the downstream side. Thus, a weir is similar to a small dam constructed across the river with the difference that the excess water flows downstream only through a small portion called spillway and in case of weir, the excess water flows over its entire length. Next, another uh, definition which is necessary to know uh, nappy and crest like this as shown in the figure. This is known as nappy and this the top portion is known as crest. So, let us see uh, the sheet of water flowing through a notch or over a wire is known as nappy or vein. The bottom edge of the notch or the top edge of a wire over which water flows is known as seal or crest. The height above the bottom of the tank or canal is also known as crest height. So this much the wear and notch also is having a different formula for the calculation of for the calculation of different problems. If you want you can go through the all the formulas to solve different problems. Let's discuss another article this is types of flow through the pipes so the fluids can be classified into different types based on the variation of the fluid characteristics like velocity density etc and these are the different types like uniform non uniform laminar turbulent compressible incompressible rotational and irrotational last one is one two and three dimensional flow so let's discuss one by one First is steady flow. So a flow is defined steady when its fluid characteristics like velocity, density and pressure at a point do not change with time. This is these are the mathematical expression. Similarly unsteady, a flow defined as unsteady when the fluid characteristics like velocity, pressure and density at a point changes with respect to time. This is known as unsteady. Next is uniform and non-uniform. So uniform flow. Uh, this is the type of flow, fluid flow in which the velocity of the flow at any given time does not change with respect to space. And the uniform flow, we mathematically we represent it like this. So in case of non-uniform, the velocity of the flow at any given time changes with respect to space. Mathematically like this. So velocity change with respect to space. This is the expression. Next is laminar. So laminar and turbulent flow in a pipe flow is characterized based on the Reynolds number. Laminar flow is defined as the type of flow in which the fluid particles move along a well defined streamline or path such, such that all the streamlines are straight and parallel to each other. Uh, next is turbulent. Like in that case this is the opposite of laminar that means uh, in which the fluid particles move in a zigzag manner. The movement in zigzag manner results in high turbulence and it is are formed. Next is compressible and incompressible. So in case of compressible, the fluid flow in which the density of the fluid changes from one point to another point. This means the density is not constant. And in case of incompressible, type of flow in which the density of the fluid is constant from one point to another. So rho equal to constant here. Next is rotational and irrotational. So rotational fluid flow is defined as the type of fluid flow in which the fluid particles while flowing along streamline and also these particles rotate about their own axis. So in that particular case we can say this fluid is or this fluid flow is rotational flow. Uh, like irrotational is opposite of rotational in that particular case the fluid particles flowing along streamline but do not rotate about their own axis and uh, next is one two and three dimensional flows so for one dimensional flow the fluid flows only in one dimension or in only one direction that means if we say x y and z so if we consider u as the fluid flow in x direction, V 
fluid flow in y direction w the fluid flow in z direction then in one dimensional flow the fluid only flow in the x direction that is u equal to f if we say function of fx all are and other two are zero similarly two dimension u equal to f x y v equal to z x y but w equal to zero here for three dimension u equal to all the fluid particles are flowing in three direction that means in x y and z direction we represent it like this so with this this article is completed in next lecture again we will continue the same chapter chapter 2 but with another article so thank you